Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome um, to this live session on, on um, you know, Scholarium 2.0 launch. Uh, my name is Rajat Sadama. I'm one of the co-founders of EGMAT, and I'm going to be your main host today. Um, uh, first of all, I want to thank everyone for joining me today. I, I know in parts of Asia and, and in South America, COVID's uh, actually very rampant right now. And I want to thank you guys you know, for taking the time out to, to, to be here despite uh, uh, whatever is going at home. And, and, and I promise to, to make this worth your while. Um, so um, this session is, is really uh, exciting for me for, for a couple of reasons. Um, one of them is, um, is that you know, Scholarium 2.0 is, uh, is, is, is a part of the broader vision that, uh, uh, that we curated about a year and a half back. And, uh, and the second reason is that, uh, that this, is, uh, this is one product where, where um, you know, Pyle and I have just had as much uh, input as everyone else has. Usually when we build products in Pyle and I uh, take a, 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 a fairly large share of defining um, uh, what what goes in, but here it's the EGMAT team that has done the the primary work. So it's it's a it's a fruit of um, of, of of their efforts and and so people such as Abhi, Shantanu, Atul, uh, Aditi, uh, Dhananjay, all of them have contributed to this, and this is what has made this product uh, what it is today. So let's kind of talk about what where we'll go. So let's talk about the agenda. So I'm going to briefly talk about. Um, uh, you know a bit about EGMAT's history and and uh, and where we are going. I'm going to take about five to seven minutes doing that because that would set context as to why we created Scholarium. What is it that we are trying to achieve? Then I'm going to focus primarily on on Scholarium 2. Dot. I'm going to take about 20 25 minutes over there. Um, now Scholarium 2. Dot has a ton of features. I'm not going to focus on all of them. I'm going to focus on two objectives that we created Scholarium 2. Dot with, and and how you fulfill those objectives. And um, I'm going to show about three demos while while doing that. And then towards the end, we'll have Q&A. And, and I can really see some excellent questions. Uh, some of those questions that you've asked, we'll, we, they will be answered um, during the course of the sessions. Others that um, haven't been, you know, I'm going to reserve some time towards the end. But fairly uh, uh, short presentation. I'm going to plan to wrap my part up in about 40 minutes and give you enough time beyond that. So with that, let's kind of talk about uh, uh, EGMAT. And, and I think if you want to talk about EGMAT, uh, you've got to talk about two things. One is the results that we've delivered so far. I'm going to spend about a minute on that. But then um, the thing that I want to talk about is what drives us as a company and where is it that that, that we are going. So I'm going to start briefly uh, with the results. So EasyMat as a company, you know, we work with about 10,000 students a year or so. And um, and and a good number of them are from India, but about sixty percent of them are from India. But forty percent of them are from from the rest of the world as well. So we deal with a fairly um, uh, uh, you know wide gamut of students. Uh, South America is a huge uh, set of uh, source of customers for us, and we love folks from there because they're very very diligent, and and the kind of success that we've had is is really good, uh, both from South America as well as uh, from India. OK, now, how do you measure success? And, and success in the GMAT world is, is always comparative. And, um, and, and when I talk about success, I'd like to talk about stuff from 2016. Why? Because that's when GMAT Club introduced their verified reviews policy, which, is me, which means that every review that was posted in 2016 or, or beyond that um, was verified either using a, a you know, valid score report or a school's email address or, or you know, a huge amount of activity on GC. Um, and, and when you compare us to the next four partners that are there, and you can see their respective names and the trademarks do belong to these companies for, 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 for those names, you find that you know, we've had more reviews than these companies. In fact, even when you combine all of those from 2016, uh, you know, more reviews with, than all of them combined. Or so, um, in fact, so a lot of people really say, okay, you've been a partner for a long time as of these companies, but what about recency? What about in 2021? So even when you look at data till, uh, till April 30th or end of April 2021, what you would find is that we've uh, counted for the lion's share of reviews. In fact, only two test prep companies have accounted for any significant number of reviews. That's us and Target Test Prep, crack verbal to a certain degree, but pretty much everyone else. And we're talking about each of the 13 to 14 partners that are there on GMAT Club. And these four months, the first four months of 2021, others have practically not accounted for any significant number of reviews or so. Um, so 
so this was briefly about about reviews, but but I think you've got to understand why these reviews happen and and what drives the success. So to do that, it's really important to understand the DNA of the company. So we started EG Martin in in 2021 with this singular goal of creating and um, an online course that's way more effective than uh, you know um, a, a classroom code or instructor led course. Those courses at that time were about fourteen fifteen hundred bucks or so. We didn't have a ton of money to invest. We had about $10,000 to invest, but we did have a ton of sweat equity. So we put in about two years of sweat equity before we launched our first course. That was just you know this intense correction and the critical reasoning courses over there. They were very successful. We grew based on, based on word of mouth. And we pretty much invested everything um, that, that we earned from this in, in, in research and development and enhancing our courses. As a company, we spent pretty much everything that we that we earn in, in, in R&D. And, and, and in about 2018, we'd actually uh, gotten so good that our courses, the kind of success that they were delivering was way more than the success that a, a classroom course would deliver, whether it was a, an instructor-led human presence classroom or an online classroom course. And and um, and, and so at that time, we were spending about 10,000 hours per year in research and development. So we asked ourselves, you know, we've achieved this goal. There's actually uh, no no question as to whether our courses are more effective than, a, than an instructor-led course. So what what next and um, uh, and 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 so then we said well uh, uh, at that point we kind of set our next goal which is to really say the, that hey can an online solution be more effective than working with a private tutor now when you think about working with a private tutor you've got to define success slightly differently and that which is what we did we defined success in in two terms one is in terms of score improvement of course but the other is also in terms of um, how long it takes for you to put in that score improvement why because one of the biggest benefits of working with a private tutor is you know a private tutor tells you precisely where you need to improve and and, and to what extent do you need to improve so these were the two targets that that we we put in uh, we also increased our investment in R&D. Why? Because this was a much bigger challenge. We didn't want to take eight years to get there. And um, and we're still not there. Uh, I, I, based on our current estimates, we'll get there by the end of 2022. So, so in about a year and a half or so. But since March of 2020, we've invested about 30,000 man hours in this effort. Um, in fact, we've revamped, completely revamped 40% of all course material uh, with, within EG Mat. And, and this has delivered some really good success rate. Um, and we've seen the success um, uh, of late um, uh, for 2021. I'm going to really show you success just in uh, in, in in April of, of 2021 over here. So you've seen the success, but if you look at just in April of 2021, um, we accounted for about 75% of all reviews when it came to verbal, and in fact, when it came to quant, you know, a lot of us, a lot, a lot of you know us for verbal. Um, when it came to quant, we actually accounted for a lion's share of quant reviews as well. This is just in April, and this is because we've been revamping our quant course, and we'd released about 60% of our quant course uh, by, by end of March. And this is the kind of impact that, 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 that this had. Again, two companies account for about 90% of all GMAT Club reviews. It's us and TTP, and it's no surprise that we focus, both these companies focus primarily on, on the GMAT. We don't focus on admission consulting and, and so on and so forth. So, and again, you can see uh, some of these other companies didn't have any. So where did we invest this time and money? We invested this time and money in, in, in three primary areas. One is enhancing our methods. At EGMAD, we have some very unique methods. Uh, Pile invented the meaning-based approach in, in 2010 when people didn't even know that um, that meaning was important in SE. And, and we've kind of refined that approach three times since now. So we are in that third generation of, of that meaning-based approach. Similarly, we are in the, in the third generation of pre-thinking approach and the second generation of our reading strategies. We completely revamped our quant um, uh, course. Um, we, we, and we introduced the, the, the notion of process skills in, 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 in quant course. Anyone uh, who's been seen our quant course has seen and the impact of this. So that was the first investment that we made. The second investment that we made was, was in giving you personalized feedback. Every GMAT student gets up to 500 personalized, uh, gets personalized feedback up to 500 times. Um, and, 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 and essentially, which means that every learning activity that you go goes through an evaluation and we tell you whether you, know, you need to revise that learning activity, whether you've done well, or whether you need to actually redo it right from scratch because you would not focus and then you have not performed as well. And, and what that does is, you know, when you think about success on the GMAT, 
it is an outcome of of you building up various nuggets together and and when each of those nuggets actually comes in together success is more or less a given if those nuggets don't come through together then failure is more or less a given so so that evaluation engine that that feedback 500 times is really really essential to to building that success the third thing that we have done is is we completely revamped how we go about giving support and very specifically uh, our strategy support we com we revamped our methodologies we revamped how we looked at data and 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 how we curated improvement plans for for you and we created a dedicated success team that uh, that spends about a thousand hours a month or so uh, in in giving you support, um, and, and you can see some of um, some of the success over here. In fact, if you go and 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 look at uh, uh, the Club reviews and and you know from from July of 2020, you're going to see this constant occurrence where where people would talk about this is, uh, the detail in in the responses they get, both from our subject matter experts as well as from our GMAT strategy experts. Okay, um, so that was my my. Let me just check my time. About eight minutes of of the history of UGMAT. Where is that we are investing and where are we going? So let's now talk about Scholarium 2.0. And and, um, and and as I said, you know there are lots of things to talk about Scholarium 2.0. I'm going to talk about 30% of 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 you know what's there in 2.0, and the rest 70% is left for you um, uh, to to discover. Okay, so. Um, the context for Scholarium 2.0, I think it's come at a very interesting time. Um, 2020 was probably one of the most competitive um, application cycles. You know, we had uh, super high application volume. Uh, in fact, the highest it was there in a decade. Yet there was enough opportunity. Why? Because there's a lot of scholarship money as well. Uh, but to get scholarship, to get an admit that score of 720 wasn't enough. You, you actually needed to score higher. And that's the vision for Scholarium 2.0. Is, is is kind of built on that foundation. So it's for those of you who are EG Math students, you know scholarium comes in that second stage of learning, which means when you get hit that 60th, 65th percentile or so, and it helps you get to that 90th percentile. You have to have the right foundation. Uh, you have to know the methods when you come in scholarium. So it it it's a tool that empowers you guys to go from that, you know, I call it from 640 to 740, but but really the thing is at a subsection level, it's from 60th percentile to that 95th percentile. And that's kind of where, where, where we, we use Scholarium. In the context of that, we wanted to achieve two things. One is we want to make sure that with, with every question you solve, you improve faster, you improve to a greater degree, both speed and, and the extent. And the second thing was that we wanted to equip everyone to create those hyper-personalized improvement plans. Why? Because this improvement from that 640 to 740, it doesn't happen if you don't have those hyper-personalized improvement plans. And if you can read reviews, you're going to talk about, you're going to see people talking about those hyper-personalized um, uh, improvement plans or so. Okay. So, so with that, let's kind of talk about both these things. And I'm going to talk about just these two aspects of Scholarium 2.0. And, and, and just to start with this, you know, I want to just tell you that Scholarium 2.0 is so powerful that even when you have that 740 score, it can tell you what should you focus on to get to that 760. It's that granular and it's that precise. Okay, if you are consistent, that is. I, I want to really just say this. And 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 so, how do you get more from from each question? What's the motivation for this? And this is a quote from um, James Clear, who's the author of Atomic Habits. He says, "Just as atoms are the building blocks of molecules." Atomic habits are the building blocks of, of remarkable results. And remarkable results is what we are going for in this case. And when you think about what's the building block of, um, of Scholarium, it is you taking a quiz. It is you solving a question. And, 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 and when you take a quiz, um, you, know, you have these, these, these following questions. The first one is, what is my real score? You know, when you get a score, can I trust it? Um, which question should I review? And the third piece, which is there, is how should you go about reviewing those questions. These are three questions that is there. What's my real score? Can I trust it? The, sc the score that I see in the quiz, can is that trustworthy? How can I maintain or improve that score? And then how should I go about reviewing them? Okay. Um, and, and so before curating this feature in, in, in Scholarly, which we call as the expert feature, we kind of looked at students and we said, OK, when people take a quiz, about 25% of them end up creating an error log. Um, 
and 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 even when they do it they only focus on incorrect questions in fact only people who who actually create a proper error law who get the most out of a quiz as our folks who actually work with a good private tutor and and we wanted and this is kind of that number is even less than 25%. Maybe it's about 8 to 10% or so. Folks who work with a private tutor. Why? Because private tutors have that eye to figure out which questions to review, how to go about reviewing them. They can tell you, hey, this score is not representative or, or so on and so forth. So with Colerinium 2.0, our hope really is, is that, um, uh, you know, each one of you is going to get that power to, to kind of get the most out of your quiz results, which is going to be by, by making sure that you review the live, you understand whether your score reports are, uh, score results are repeatable. You review the, the questions that you need to review and you review them in the right manner. Okay. And which is where the expert piece in Scholarium is, is super helpful. Okay. What it does is it curates a list of questions that, that you should review. It does it automatically, and I'm going to talk about which factors it looks at. Um, it tells you why you should review them. Not every question needs to be reviewed for the same reason. Some questions you make mistake on, others you take longer, some, some are ones that you, that you rush through. It tells you why you should review a question and then accordingly how you should review that particular question. Okay, so right now I'm going to show a live demo over here. Let's see. So let's go over here. So here is a, a, a scholarium screen where, where, where a student has, um, has, this is a live demo, this is an actual student uh, data over here. What you see is what this student has done is he scored 80th percentile. It's a verbal ability quiz on, on, on scholarium. Now, the first question I would say is, can you trust the score? And which is where we look at three pieces, timing influence, luck factor, and, and rush through factor. And, and and when you look at this, you see this part luck factor is high. So this student, even though he or she got an 80th percentile, is not likely to repeat the same score again. Why? Because um, he or she rushed through certain questions and yet got them correct, which is kind of what we call as getting lucky, right? Which means it led to an inflated score. That could be an issue. Then it tells you... Uh, 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 various factors, you know, was, was your score negatively impacted by timing? No, it won't be. Why? Because you got lucky. It tells you which questions did you get lucky on. Now, focus on this piece over here where, you know, question number 34 and 35 are the ones that, that the student got lucky on. Focus on this part where you have recommended time, which is about a minute 26, and the person took, um, you know, a 43 seconds on it and on the other part. What you don't see over here is question number 30, so I'm going to talk about why, why that's there. Then there's a rush through factor, which means this is a question that the student should have answered given the difficulty level, but he took less time. And because of this, the student got this question wrong. All of this is built into the AI. You get this over here. Um, and, and then it tells you how do you go about review, reviewing this. These are live videos that you can, you can see. And then it curates a review list. And, 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 and this is really important. Why? Because when you see this review list, it's not just composed of questions that you answered incorrectly. There, is a, there are a significant number of questions um, that you answered correctly. Uh, also, uh, 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 even when you get an answer wrong, you know, it tells you what kind of review you need to do. What is a recommended review? And you have three different kinds of reviews. Took longer, strategic review, or, or rush through. Let me actually do one thing. I want to move this part over here okay and 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 this is something that, that's really important i want to talk about the precision of this why because when you think about it a lot of people really say hey i have a timing problem and then what happens is they take a quiz they they feel rushed towards the end and let me show you raw data over here and and which is what the student did he or she rushed towards the end. You can see towards the end. This is a 36 question quiz, a verbal ability quiz is like a verbal mini mock. And, and you can see towards the end, the student rushed through. Now, question number 36 is not tagged as, um, as, 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 as a question where, where, where the student rushed through. Why? Because the system, while tagging, whether, whether, whether you got lucky or whether you rushed through, looks at the median time to solve this question. And let me show that to you over here. 
Look at this tab over here. The median time to solve this question was 57 seconds. The student took about 40 seconds, which means that he was within the um, within the the margin of error over here, and and hence you know you can't really say that this particular student rushed through through scholarium. You get this data, which is which is super precise in in this card. You also get the starts around around the question as to how long you you took. The other pieces that are there. Is, is that you can navigate, you can make notes very easily, you can navigate through various parts of the question fairly easily. And you can really see this is very, very readable. Okay, so, so let's go back to, to our raw data screen. Now, let's look at a question where the student did rush through. This was a question, a CR question that the student did rush through. And you can get good justification as to why this particular student rushed through or got lucky on this particular question. The median time to solve this question is two minutes, seven seconds. The time taken by this particular student was 55 seconds. There's a very high likelihood that the student got lucky while solving this question. Uh, and, and if a similar question were to appear again on a test, the student wouldn't be able to do this in about 55 seconds or so. And you can see this data and see why we say that. Now, a lot of you say we have a timing problem, right? How many of you say? Uh, 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 that you have a timing problem. A lot of you really say that. Most people, when they hit that 70th percentile, don't have a timing problem in SC. They have a timing problem in solving certain kinds of questions in SC. And, 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 and what this does by, by, by doing this atomic level comparison is it tells you where you have a problem. Okay. So, so in this case, you know, if you were to look at it in a generic fashion, if you were to look at average times, you would say, hey, my, I have a timing problem in CR because I have a strength and an assumption question in, in, in that are there uh, where I've taken longer. No, you don't have a timing problem in CR because in general, while answering strength and an assumption questions, you don't take longer. But in these questions over here, there was something that, that, that messed you up, which is why you took a lot longer than what you should have taken. And, and, and by revising those specific constructs, you know, you can address that timing problem with a lot more precision. You no longer call it a timing problem in CR or an SC or an RC. You call it a timing problem in that particular construct. And when you can define it that precisely, that's when correction becomes a lot more certain. It becomes a lot more, um, it happens a lot more quickly. And, 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 and again, you can see how these atomic level feedback, it allows you to improve faster with, 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 with every... Oh, sorry about that. I, I, um, I, I had to, uh, uh, yeah, sorry about that. Uh, you should be able to see me again. Even though I love technology, you know, we sometimes mess up uh, when, when doing this. All right. So you guys there with me? Perfect. So, so, so this is where you can see how with every quiz that you attempt, you can get more out of it. Now, the next piece is how should you review these things? You know, with every screen, we have these little helpful videos where uh, there's this launchers where, where you can really get help right there. So for example, if you would want to know how to review an SC question, click on SC strategic review, and you'd, you'd really see how do you go about reviewing an SC question. Uh, similarly for CR and RC as well. So this is something that has been curated for, for each one of you. All right. With that, let me go back to my presentation. Okay. So just to, 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 to compare, uh, if you were to look at how you go about doing things regularly, a regular curated list does not account for luck factor. You just focus on incorrect questions. You don't really know how to go about reviewing this. In fact, I've seen students error logs and, and they just say, I made a mistake in this because, uh, because I did not notice this. The, those error logs are not focused on the methods or which step of the process that uh, you faltered on. 
with this, and I didn't go through the strategic review videos, but if you go through the strategic review videos, if you go through the error lock template, we actually even provide an error lock template there, um, you would really, it, it forces you to list down the precise cause of why you made a mistake. Once you list down that cause, improvement becomes a lot faster. Also, one of the biggest things that's not there is you know questions on which you took longer. Those questions are not present. And in the absence of that, you tell yourself you have a timing issue. Whereas in reality, your timing issues are ability issues on those specific questions, which morph themselves as timing issues. Um, with the expert curated list, you, you get the list of questions where you have timing issues. And, and with the detailed solutions there, you can fix those timing issues right then and there. And what you're going to really see is as you take these, these, these um, recommendations into account and you act upon them, you're going to find that those timing issues go down progressively. And, and, and they're going to go down really, really fast. Because once you're at that 70th percentile, you, you're not going to have subsection-wide timing issues. You're going to have specific question-level timing issues. And, 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 and this is where scholarium flags it. And, and, and that's the beauty of data. Why? Because we have data for every question. We have data for upwards of 5,000 attempts or so. And we, when we compare your data against those the data from those 5,000 attempts, we can precisely define where you have timing issues. Okay. And, and this is what an expert curated list does for you. And the beauty of this is your focus is not is no longer required to create that list. Your focus is primarily there to to fo to look at the recommendations, act upon upon them, and and excel. Okay, and 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 think about it this way. You know, an average EG math student takes about forty five quizzes in Scholaranium. Even if you get five percent more out of each quiz, imagine the kind of score improvements we will see. Imagine, just, just imagine that. And, and this is what we've done. Um, we've simplified the curation at a quiz level as well as the review at a question level. Okay, so that was about the first feature. I am at about, you know, 10 minutes into, into, into my Scholarium overview. Let's talk about the second core piece, which is hyper-personalization, okay? Now, I'm sure many of you would have heard that this, this notion that data tells a story and, and data does tell a story. What a lot of people don't recognize is that data that's segmented properly and organized logically, it, it yields improvement plans. And, 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 and it yields those hyper-personalized improvement plans that lead to, to fast improvement. Okay. And, and Scholarium, the second aspect of Scholarium 2.0 that I want to highlight today uh, second of the many aspects, by the way, um, is, is is how Scholarium 2.0 enables you to create those hyper-personalized improvement plans. Okay. Now, let's say you are at that 670, 680, or, or 650 score, and, 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 um, and you've got to create the plan to move to that 740, 750 score. The first thing you've got to do is figure out where you need to improve, and how do you go about doing that? You know, you, you start with that knowledge that your GMAT score is composed of five subsectional ability scores. So for you to define uh, uh, where that improvement is going to come from, the first thing you've got to do is you've got to define which subsection are you going to focus on, SCC or RC, arithmetic or algebra geometry. The second thing that you have to, to look at is, 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 Within that subsection, where do you need to improve? Why? Because, you know, if you're all at that 70th percentile uh, in, let's say, SC, you're not going to go back and study all of SC alone. You've got to narrow it down to, to, to which aspect of SC do you want to study on. And, and then you've got to create a plan to, to improve your ability and track that improvement to that increased ability in SC and eventually that high GMAT score. And this is the same thing, whether it's algebra, this is the same thing, whether it's uh, is geometry or, or, or number properties or so on and so forth. Okay. So in terms of your subsec subsectional improvement pl plan, one high level statement that you have to make is I need to get better at solving dash difficulty level of questions in this. So uh, an example of this could be, I need to get better at solving um, hard even odd questions in number properties. I need to get better at solving medium distance speed and time questions in word problems. You need to be able to look at data and, and, and define this. Okay. Now, what are some of the problems 
that that you have when you define this first of all you know you, a lot of people don't have this data which is this granular a lot of people who who actually study using books study on on you know on multiple platforms they don't the granularity of data is not there uh, sometimes there's just too much granularity you know for example if you have data that's that's organized by by topics you know in a piece so in in, in subject in sentence correction you can have about seven to eight topics and and you know when you have eight topics you've solved 100 questions uh, you know you get on an average about eight questions per topic similarly in number properties uh, you, you can have seven or eight topics you solve 100 questions you know you don't get enough data where you get uh, uh, so you have uh, eight questions per topic. Each top, uh, each topic has three difficulty levels. So you know three questions per difficulty level. Um, there's no way you can derive any statistical output out of this. Also, if you figure out you have a specific weakness, how do you know that if you improve on those areas, you're actually going to improve? For example, if you say, "Hey, I'm 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 weak in subject verb agreement errors," we know that that's not as a, as big a part of of sentence correction. So even if you improve there, your SEO ability is not going to improve by a whole lot, and consequently, your GMAT score is not going to improve by a whole lot, or, or or so. So you've got to make sure that you choose a sizable chunk overall. Okay, and and we kind of face that challenge when we when we uh, give feedback to our students, and and which is where we kind of in 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 Scholarium 2.0 we kind of define a granularity architecture, which is what we call as um, as a block level architecture. Now another problem that a lot of people have is is the problem of recency. You know, many of you prepare across prepare for the GMAT across months, which means that you may have data that's three months old, you have, may have data that's one month old. How do you filter data to account for recency? Because recency is where your your um, uh, what, what determines your current performance uh, overall. It also allows you to track that. Okay, I've talked about less data as well. So one of the first things that we did was we kind of created a new chart type that takes into account the, the subsectional granularity and recency. And this is what we call as a 3D chart. And I'm going to actually do a live demo of this to show that. What you see is on the verbal side, um, you, you, you actually see your overall verbal accuracy. It is divided by subsections. You can really compare it with difficulty levels, you know, easy, medium, hard. And you can do your recency as well. All of this in a single chart. And this is, this is truly a three-dimensional chart by subsections, by difficulty level, and by, rec uh, by recency. And it allows you to narrow down the subsection and the difficulty level that you need help on. Okay. The second thing is, and we talked about recency. The, the, the third thing is, how do you group data into, into sizable chunks and, and get enough statistical data on this? And which is where we created or curated what we call as blocks. And this is something that we've been doing this internally, but we never exposed this to you. When you think about an ability quiz, it has a certain composition. When you think about a mock test, it has a certain composition. And that composition is composed of blocks of questions, which is why many of you, when you write to us and say, hey, I have 200 questions uh, uh, left in my essay scholar name, why can't I curate an ability quiz? Why? Because if you've exhausted questions out of a block, you know the system won't allow you to do that. So. In Scholarium, we created these analytics by blocks. So in algebra, for example, you'd have four blocks over here. And, 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 and you can filter by difficulty level and recency across these blocks. And what this allows you to do is it allows you to precisely define the block where you need help. And, and it then allows you to track your improvement. And, and it, it ensures, because you're focusing on a block level, it ensures that if you improve that, that in, at a block level, that will lead to a tangible improvement at a subsection level, which in turn will lead to a tangible improvement in, 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 in that score out of 800 or so. And you can see the blocks in algebra over here. And, 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 and because you're comparing blocks across each other, you can see where you need help. And I'm going to show this with, with a demo over there. OK, so with that, let's go into a demo. Again, remember, the question that I'm trying to answer is, I need to get better at solving this difficulty level question in this subsection. Okay, so with that, let's kind of look at a demo at block level. And let me just get to this. And okay, give me one second. Where is my Firefox? Yes. So here's one of our students, and um, and 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 again, what you see over here is. Is is the is the Quant Scholarium dashboard, and this person has taken about four hundred and forty six questions, and and 
and again, the accuracies across various subsections is, is very, very similar. Now, if you were to focus on, on finding where to, to where this person needs help, the first thing you do is, is you really say, I'm going to focus on, on hard questions. And just by this, by focusing on hard questions, you can see, okay, number properties seems to be a weakness. But now where should this person improve in number properties? And to do that, let's go into this person's skill data. So we're going to go into skill data. We go into number properties. This is where your block level estimates are. Again, you can see the four blocks, estimation, rounding, even odds and basics, LCM, GCD, and primes, divisibility and remainders, and stats over here. Again, remember, we were focused just on hard questions, so we're going to focus and filter by hard questions. And as you do that, what you see is estimation and rounding and even odd and basics, decent accuracy. LCM, GCD, and primes, this is where this person needs to, 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 to spend his energy. Now, this data is based on nine questions. Nine questions is a reasonably reliable metric. Divisibility and remainders and units digits, again, you know, it's not as bad as LCM, GCD, and primes, but definitely an issue over there. And similarly, stats, you know, not a problem. 70% is really good accuracy. So if I am this particular student and I'm saying, okay, where am I going to improve my, 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 uh, uh, my ability in 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 um, uh, 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 overall in in number properties or how am I how am I going to go and improve that ability? I'm going to focus on LCM, GCD, and primes and and divisibility and remainder and unit digit. These are the blocks I'm going to focus on. What I'm not going to focus on is you know even order and basics and estimation and rounding or or stats. So this is one example of how you can uh, you can really see this. Now this sometimes shows up in your mock performance as well. And let's just go over here, show Sigma X mock. Let's go into this mock score. And, and, and this person scored a Q50. Now, when you look at this, you know, uh, this particular person, let's go to the attempt piece, arithmetic, let's go to the incorrect. And we do this all in a Sigma X mock. And you can see else the mistakes are in LCM GCD, hard questions, units digit, hard question, which is kind of what we had identified over there. If you improve on this, you can get to that 51. Okay, so this is where data can be super powerful. This, this, this hyper specific personalization can, can help you uh, get there. Let's take another example. I think I do have uh, another example as well over here. And um, and in this case, we're going to look at the recency piece. Again, we're going to focus on hard questions. This is a completely different student over here. We're going to focus on last 20. And, and you can see last 20 number properties is an issue. Word problems is an issue over here. I'm going to focus on word problems because in the previous one, we, we focus on number properties. Again, we follow the same piece. We go to skill data. Let's uh, go there. Let's remove this. Go to word problems. Again, do the block level analysis. Focus on hard questions. And you can see mixtures, persons, and ratios. Not a problem. Sales and purchase, not a problem. But savings and interest, huge issues. Okay. And distance, speed and work, still an issue. So again, you can see if I were to improve my ability in word problems, I am going to focus on, 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 on these pieces over here. Okay. So again, does it show up in mock? Again, sometimes it does show up in mock over here. Uh, let's go let's get to the mock again as i said even when you are at 740 you can you can see that let's analyze the quant section and 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 let's go to the attempt piece uh and let's go to incorrect and actually am i in the different browser yeah you can know i'm right you can see savings and interest over here the the only topic uh, which which was there in, from this is, is in this case Okay, so um, hopefully this gives you an idea of, of how we, we curate that, that, those improvement plans. Let me make sure I can see you guys as well. Okay, we've done the live demo. So with Scholarium 2.0, you can really get to the point where you can say, I need to get better at, at, at solving this difficulty category of uh, questions in this subsection within that in this particular block or so. Uh, 
Now, how did we come about this? Um, for those of you who know, we have a program called Mentorship, and, uh, and, 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 and we got a lot of these insights from Mentorship. Mentorship is a program that we launched in, um, in January of, uh, of, of 2010, and we continued that program for about six months, and it had incredible success. Uh, um, okay. And, 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 and the reason why we had the success was because, uh, uh, because essentially, uh, uh, we gave each one of these students hyper-personalized uh, improvement plans. 80% of students who worked hard, who followed and executed on those plans, got to their target score. And, and, and this is, as I said, an internal R&D program. Even though we, we didn't charge any student any uh, uh, money for this, we spent about $1,500 of R&D money per student to achieve that. And here's some of the success that, that you see over here. And, and as you read the success, you know, uh, you will really talk about, uh, you'll really see areas that are talked about, highlighting key areas of improvement. All of these students, once they, when they got into mentorship, they were already at a certain certain a 70 or percentile ability level. And, and, and by giving them these customized tests, um, we were able to help these improve. Okay. Um, he mentored me on the kinds of questions that I needed to practice given my ability at that time. Okay. Um, Here's a guy who actually didn't know that 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 he was struggling in CR because he thought he was he was strong, and 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 which is when the team reached out to him to focus on CR because data showed that he wasn't. And this is uh, this is the power of data. And this is the guy who ended up scoring a 750. Okay, um, Rohini. Actually, we we uh, we had her on um, on a GMAT Club YouTube live session uh, yesterday, um, and 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 again. Talks the same. Talks about uh, those those personalized feedback points as well. I mean, if you watch her video, you're gonna really see how she got personalized feedback. How how building those hyper personalized uh, study plans helped her improve. Now, prior to this, um, only our our mentors had had this capability of building these hyper personalized study plans. Uh, right now, with Scholarium 2.0, each one of you has that has that capability. And again, um, if you go read those reviews, and if you go look at those video debriefs, in fact, one of the a fun fact about these video debriefs, which is, you know, those YouTube interviews, which are 150 plus, about 60% of them have been in the last seven to eight months. And the reason why that has been the case is because when you give students a hyper-personalized study plans, when they succeed, they are very thankful to you and they, they come back and, and they're ready to talk about how they succeeded. Uh, whereas if you talk about other prep companies and say, why is it that your students don't have those video debriefs? What they'll tell you is, you know, our students are are, are not are shy to come on with you. And again, that doesn't happen with us. Okay. So this is the power of hyper-personalization that's now there with you with regards to Scholarium 2.0. And this is what happens when data is segmented properly and organized logically. So... With this, we hope to, to make sure that, that each one of you improves a lot faster with every question you solve. Now, we are giving you the guidance. You still need to put that effort. That effort has to come from you. Similarly, we are giving you that guidance on, on how to create those hyper-personalized study plans. In each one of the videos that is there, you have case studies where, where you can that you can see to build those hyper-personalized study plans. And, and, and so, um, for example, if I go into skill data over here, let me just hide this and hide this. You can see the SC block level analysis, RC block level analysis, those case studies exist for, for you. You can look at them and if you have questions, write to us. But, but each one of you now has this power to improve. Uh, it's on to you to act upon it, take CCAR help and improve. With that, I want to thank you for, for joining me today. And, um, and, and at this point, um, I'd be happy to take your questions. Yes, will Scholarium 2.0 be available to already enrolled users? Yes. It will be. By the way, if you like this, uh, uh, you know, uh, do connect with us on, on our LinkedIn and on our YouTube channels. We'll be talking about more and more case studies. When will it be live? For for uh, okay, Quant Expert has come now, and you, uh, what's next? What can we expect? Uh, 
you, there are a few things that you would expect. First of all, we already have the next two or three generations of scholarly implant. In fact, one of the, a few things that we've not talked about is, is that um, with this scholarly release, we kind of really, uh, completely revamped our strategic review methods. We actually added about 90 new questions to verbal scholarly. Um, you can expect more and more um, student defined quizzes uh, or expert defined quizzes, that is. Um, and, and you can also expect um, uh, our ability to, or, or, or the technology enabling you to build in those, those good habits in there. Okay. Um, when will you get access? Um, you will get access uh, over the next one week or so. In fact, people, all the new students who purchase uh, uh, right from tomorrow will, will get the new Scholaranium. But within a week, pretty much everyone who is there should, should get new Scholaranium. All your data will be ported over to, to new scholarship. You don't lose any data. You don't lose any analytics. And, and one of the things that, are, that that I'd recommend that you guys do is as you get to the new scholarium, spend some time to watch the onboarding videos. Um, I mean, there's a lot that I haven't talked about. For example, I've not talked about how as you bookmark questions and if you go to the bookmark screen, you can now review your bookmarks every week. And, and you can create that customized review process every week. Uh, to, to, to review all the bookmark questions and all your notes every week. Okay. Are there error lock templates available for all subsections? They're available for the verbal subsections. Uh, they're coming very soon for quant subsections. Will my old data be also be analyzed? Yes, yes. All these analytics are available on the old data. And in fact, I'm saying we have the next two generation of Scaldrinium defined. Um, they are already in 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 in, in works. And um, and and you know as as those analytics uh, become available they will also be available in all of the old data that you have. All right, any other question? Um, explain the process of mentorship program. We don't do the mentorship program the old way that we do. We, we actually have, again, um, last mile pushers program. Um, and, um, and, and, and again, so we, we reach out to you. These are all internal R&D programs which allow us to understand how we can help you uh, succeed better. So we, we kind of choose students. Okay. Um, can you get access to Scholarium alone? Uh, no, uh, you can't. It's just because, hey, you find out a problem in Scholarium. How do you fix it? You know, it's just a part of, um, of our offering. Any browser recommendations? Um, so I'd say uh, you know all Chrome-based browsers work just fine, and uh, uh, and and so yeah, that's what I would say. I mean, they, it should work on most browsers, frankly, even Safari. Um, uh, but but all Chrome-based or WebKit-based browsers should work. Is it tablet-friendly? Most of it is super tablet-friendly. We our focus with with so much data is not to make it mobile friendly. Why? Because we've seen just a ton of people waste questions trying to take quizzes on their cell phones. No, it's not the best way to take quizzes, guys. Don't do that. Okay. Um, thank you, Chaitanya, for uh, uh, for for this. We we strive to to make sure we we guide you guys to success. And uh, and yes, you know most. I'd, I'd, I'd say, you know, people say no question is a stupid question. I'd say 99% of the questions are not stupid questions. There are a few stupid questions, but 99% of them are not. What does six month access mean? Yes, the account is accessible for six months. Yes. Overall, how has the quant part been improved? Uh, hold on, there was a question over here. Let me just talk about this. Um, uh, as it is not seen, oh, it is actually better than the verbal part. If you're an EG Math student, you know, EG Math students now ask for the verbal part to be morphed. Remember this: all of Quant has been completely revamped since uh, since since um, uh, uh, since December of last year. We've been working on it since January of 2020. We started launching it in December, and which is where in April we delivered about 65% of all Quant success on GMAT Club. So, 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 um, yes, you know, brand that brand takes some time, but in terms of delivering success, no one's delivering as much quant success as we are. So, um, so, so, quant. You, in fact, you're going to really see the verbal courses now being morphed on 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 the quant side. Each of our quant courses, for example, has about a hundred learning paths. 
So if you're someone who's starting at a, a 50th or a 60th percentile, you don't need to decide which parts you need to learn. And, and the pace at which we've seen improvement in quant, we haven't seen that pace even in verbal. How can we leverage Collinium 2.0 in, in conjunction with our Sigma X mock? So Parth, that's a great question. So remember the three stages of learning. You know, stage two, you start with cementing, then you do test readiness, and then you do mocks. Okay, so so don't take a mock right after you you finish you know the SC course or the CR course. Make sure you do to the stage two. Make sure you do test readiness. Then you take mocks. When you take a mock, your mock gives your ability scores, your ability scores and mocks, and the comparative scores on the on the on the uh, on the three D chart they should match up. If they don't match up, ask yourself where why did you mess up, and 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 I think that's how the comparative analytics between between mocks and scholarinium is how they would be used. But if mock tells you that you have an ability issue in a certain kind of questions, go back, fix that ability issue in scholarinium, come back, take another mock. So you, you kind of do the entire round tripping between mocks and scholarinium. Mocks is a means to, to really show where you stand, and scholarinium is a tool to garner that improvement. Any discount for early birds for Scholarium 2.0? In fact, we're actually increase, looking to increase the price. Uh, no, I mean, look at 10x as much uh, uh, success as others have. We shouldn't be so selling our courses for 350 bucks. If you exhaust All right, sorry about that. I think, uh, 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 yeah, forgive me for for for, uh, for for the internet connection. Okay, so do we get a personalized study plan from our mentors uh, that suits our ability and progress? Each one of you gets access to the PSP tool. You know how to go about creating a personalized study plan, not once but multiple times. So, so yes, but if you have doubts, you can you can write to your mentors. But each one of you gets that. How do we choose students for mentorship program, or, or do students reach out to you? We we actually on the way we choose students depends on what are we trying to to um, to enhance, and um, and essentially, so it, it varies from, from from one month to another. Uh, so, so for us, it, it's always a. a uh, an FME failure, failure mode effect analysis over there. We kind of look at various failure modes. Uh, we hate failure, by the way. At EGMAT, when a student fails, we hate it. And, and so we really just take one failure at a time and then really say, how can we fix it? Let's kind of understand. Let's get in, understand the psyche of the student. Let's understand the constraints that a student's living under. And, and this is kind of how you go about, uh, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, being better than a private tutor. Any support that we provide for B-School application, we don't. We don't. As a company, we don't because there's so much to do in the GMAT space that, that we cannot focus on, on the MBA space. But what we do, what we have done uh, is, is that we've invited our students to come and talk about how did they, they actually go about building their, their B-School application. And in fact, on this very channel, if you look at B-School experience playlist, you're going to find the largest collection of, of students um, We've talked about the B-School journeys, uh, and then you will see students who've gotten into, into Harvard, Stanford, Wharton, Kellogg, GSP Chicago. You'll see students who've uh, gotten, once they've gotten into their MBA, they've, they've, um, they've gotten into Amazon, Microsoft, McKinsey, and they're going to talk they've talked about how they did that. So, um, so we have all of those things. Again, this is the passion that our students have and the passion to give back. How do you join the program? Just buy it from the website. Is OG 2021 quants enough for GMAT prep? If you are already at a Q48, maybe yes. But if you are at a Q43, probably not. Is 
and and again uh uh, we, uh Karthike, you can link to to the playlist if you exhaust all questions in scholar name how do you go after that again first of all akash don't do that i can tell you 95 percent of our students who, who who don't exhaust all questions in fact a hundred percent of the people who study properly they they actually use about 60 percent of questions in scholaranium this is just called rhenium gold okay uh not the questions that that added up that get added up once you you take mocks um so if you've exhausted unfortunately you have to look at the attempted pool to do this but but again do not exhaust the questions don't just look at this Okay. All right, guys. Um, with that, I want to thank everyone for joining me today. Um, hopefully, this this helps you. If it be, I truly appreciate if I can get some feedback on on the session as to what insights you 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 got from this. Um, I truly appreciate that. And if there's any other question, meanwhile, uh, I'd be happy to, to 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 discuss that as well. Okay. But I appreciate some feedback. And let's look at the time. About 55 minutes, so about 15 minutes of Q&A. I think we're right on time. And here's the B-School Experience playlist that you guys can, can, can subscribe to. You can really see that. Um, expect existing users, yes, within a week or sooner. We're going to start giving access right from tomorrow. In fact, 450 people already have access. They've uh, they've completed about 25 attempted about 25,000 questions, completed about 2,600 quizzes uh, over there. Okay. Um, now we have some upcoming sessions. Some of you have been asking about uh, uh, how do you build your study plan. We have an upcoming session on on, on how to build your study plan. That is uh, is 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 uh, uh, this weekend, I will be hosting that session. That's one of the few sessions that I still host, and I'm very passionate about it. So um, in this, we're going to really uh, uh, discuss, uh, uh, you know, how do you define that target GMAT score? How do you define the subsection you need to focus on? And um, and and uh, and and then um, how do you define metrics that you track, and how do you study to track those metrics? Okay. Uh, a lot of questions on mentorship. Again, I'll repeat, mentorship is an internal R&D program. The intent for that is to make sure that whatever we learn from it, we, we enable this uh, to everyone through technology and our services both. OK. Uh, when is the revamped advanced topics course coming? Uh, that's a question for Pyle. But, but it's coming in the next 45 days or so. OK. Now, in addition to um, uh, we also have a geometry session. That is something which has been very, very popular. Uh, so do register for that. That session is on Sunday. And um, and, and again, um, uh, it's going to, uh, and, and, and combined with that geometry session, we have a fantastic free trial that will make sure that you go from that very basics uh, uh, in, in, in certain blocks of geometry to, to, to that 90th percentile ability. Okay. All right, guys, with that, I want to thank everyone for joining me today. And, and, and thank you. And, and stay safe and, and study hard and, and go achieve those uh, 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 dream score. <laughs>